So we're going to go through it because today marks my first year anniversary on YouTube. Yay! <laughs> but you see that nib design? Oh, so pretty. It has the sakura on it. Are some of the pens that I have that have interesting nibs. Um, I, then I have a few more plastic ones. I have the mellow blue. I have Oh my goodness, I've forgotten how many you have so far. So... <laughs> Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft. Today will most probably be a longish sort of video because we are gonna try to count how many unboxed fountain pens I have. I say unboxed because full transparency, I do have a few that are still in boxes. I know, I know. All right, so we're going to go through it because today marks my first year anniversary on YouTube. Yay! <laughs> Cheering for myself, apparently. Okay, so we're gonna go through it. We're gonna count together and I might tell a few stories and well, a lot of them you already know, but in case you're new here, my name is Kai. And I have Kikai Crafts as a sort of documentation of my journey throughout my fountain pen um, odyssey. Okay, let's call it that, like some epic thing. And it's starting to feel really, really epic. Although I have to say it also feels like it's slowing down a bit. So this time last year, I recorded my first video on the 26th of November last year. I bought my first intentional fountain pen. I say that because it's not my first fountain pen. I do have another first one and I'll share it with you in a bit. And then we'll just go through all of it because one year later, in case you just started with fountain pens, um, things will change. <clears throat> and by that, I mean not only will you collect fountain pens, which are beautiful, you'll collect notebooks and cases and maybe dive into new Hobby. So again, Kai from Kikai Crafts here, and we are going to go through my full fountain pen collection. Come count with me. So we're going to start with the very first fountain pen that I ever received, and that would be this one. So this is a Faber-Castell in cocoa, and it's a beautiful piece. I think I received this maybe, I don't know, four, five years ago. It's a slip cap. And there you see it's fabric Castell. And there you see the beautiful nib fabric Castell has. fabric Castell has really nice nibs. I love that textured look. It's in medium. I rarely use this, although it'll always be in my collection. I rarely use it because it's a bit too thin for me, all right? But I have to say this is one of my favorite looking fountain pens. I love this cocoa nut um, barrel to it and the silver, um, what's this, trimming. And so this was my very first fountain pen about four, five years ago, I think. And I super, super, super liked it. But I did use it because when I got it, it didn't quite work well. But when I got back, or rather when I started with fountain pens, I got it to start working. But then I tried using it and it was a bit too slim for me. Then I got this. And this is my first intentional fountain pen. This is a Tuspy Diamond 580 iris and it is such a beautiful piece a lot of new fountain pen collectors start with twisbees and cavecos and i think actually that's what i started with as well and i understand why because these are very beautiful pieces that write really really well this one especially has like a huge ink capacity so if you're starting off you don't know where to start i suggest twisbees However, you should also know that twist bees are a little brittle, just a tiny bit. So if you have a heavy hand, um, 
you might need to move forward from Twisby sooner than you think. All right, so here is a very pretty Twisby 580 in Iris. This was my first intentional buy. And then very, very soon after that, like maybe hours, <laughs> I got my second intentional buy fountain pen, which now lives in my art box. And if I can find it, I hope it's in my art box. Ah, there it is. Okay, it is my Sailor Prophet Jr. In, I don't know what this is, some bunny pattern. It's a very pretty, pretty cute thing. It's a little dirty there, like any art material should be. Ha <laughs> ha, feels very artistic. But this one houses permanent ink. So when I do my fountain, sorry, my watercolor paintings, I can use this. Um, Maria told me from Aku Drawing, Aku Art, um, that it's always good not to use black, to use sepia and all that. Unfortunately, I couldn't find those inks, and so I currently have a black permanent ink on it. So again, this is where it all started. Five years ago, within hours of each other on the 26th of November, and then it just escalated so from those three i now have all of this and some are housed in different cases and we will go through them so i don't quite know where to start do i start with my big box where all my uninked pens are do i start with my pouches maybe i'll start with um these because you already see them so this is my display jar. Actually, it's on a shelf. Um, and this is where most, if not all, of my uninked pens are housed when I'm not using them, obviously. And on the top are my favorite pens. Actually, all of them are my favorite, but these are like my favorite favorites for different reasons. So I'll start with my Mont Blanc collection. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six here and I have two more elsewhere. These Mont Blancs are a mix of vintage Mont Blancs, which would be these two. Well, this is vintage, this is almost vintage. I have two very pretty pocket Mont Blancs from 2012. I have a Rouge et Noir Baby in Ivory and I have the most recent Robert Louis Stevenson. I won't go through them in too much detail because I have a lot of videos that talk about my Mont Blancs. So I'll go ahead and put that link up there for you so you can go visit. Suffice to say that this is my first Mont Blanc. And the reason why I got this is because I wanted to have some vintage pens and I saw this. And then after I got it, I realized just how special this Mont Blanc pen is. It's uh, from the 1980s, so it's like 40 years old, which makes it vintage. And it is, has a vermeil pattern, which is silver, which is gold plated. And it has burgundy, a burgundy body, which is quite unusual. And so when I got this, I found out that this is quite a sought after pen. Um, another pretty one that surprised me is this one. This is from the 1990s. This is a Mont Blanc Solitaire in barley corn, pretty pattern. Right, and it writes in double broad. So this is a pretty one. It still has a slip cap. And look at that feed. It's vertical. I know, little things like that excite me. Because if you look at the newest uh, Mont Blancs, this is a Robert Louis Stevenson. It's a Mont Blanc writer's edition. The feed already has the horizontal lines. This is the feed. Uh, both are really nice writers but these ones are like super wet well this is super wet this one depends on the ink um this one is often used really just right now it's resting but it'll be inked up soon and um so this was my first Mont Blanc and this was my first boutique bought Mont Blanc the Rouge et Noir baby so cute <laughs> coral slip cap really really nice nib 
That's also a very soft nib, actually. So if you have a Rouge et Noir baby, be careful with the nib. Don't baby it too much, but also don't just lend it out. Okay, so those are my Mont Blancs. Um, you find six here, and then I have two more. And then I have my sailors. So I showed, with the, uh, showed you my sailor profit. And I have uh, three more sailors that I still have in my collection. I say still because I have a few that I'll show you after They're, they are on their way out because I realized that they were too small for me. But this one, ooh, this one is a nice one. Uh, this is a Yashimoya Kubo Sakura Sailor Pro Gear. And I love this because of the nib. Well, it's an excellent writer kind of nib. But you see that nib design? Oh, so pretty. It has the Sakura on it. I love it. I don't know. Can you see it? Okay, I don't know how to make this thing focus now. But, yeah. Maybe I just draw you in. Just a scoot closer. So you can see it. Kinda. Alright. This, <laughs> you know, try. Um, this is one of my uh, first sort of like fancy buys, I suppose. I didn't really quite need it, but I liked it so much that I got it. So pretty. Rose gold trim and all of that. Then I also have a Zoom. This is a Sailor. Hmm, I forgot the name of this one. Um, but this is the one that has a Zoom nib and it has a bird on it. Look at that bird on the nib. So yeah, if you haven't noticed, I really like sailor pens really because of the feedback feel of it but i also try to choose ones that have really really nice nibs i mean sort of like etchings on the nibs and then i have platinums um these platinums uh platinum century 3776 I got them because of their, well, this one because of its design. Look at how cool that is. This is the Xiyun. If I'm not mistaken, this is a 2019 or a 2021. One of those two. And look at it. Ah, so nice. Okay, it's supposed to like uh, make you think of the clouds over Fuji. And it is a screw cap. And look at that little heart on the nib. So nice. This is also a fine, I think, or an extra fine. Oh, it's a fine. Um, it started off as a scratchy writer for me. It still feels like a scratchy writer. Um, just so you know, scratchy and feedbacky are two different things. Scratchy makes me feel like the nib is like, I don't know, like digging into the paper. Like I'm making grooves on the paper. Whereas, um, the feedback you want, I just feel like some sort of feedback when I write with it. This one felt scratchy. I've tuned it, but I haven't really written with it, so not sure if it's perform. It's gonna perform better. This one, ah, oh, so nice. Okay, so this one I got because of the rose design on the nib. Look at that. That's so nice. Okay, so this is a collaboration. This was wrought after um, by a collaboration between one of the leading Japanese uh, fountain pen clubs and uh, Platinum, the Platinum Company. And so they create a few limited editions of their uh, Platinum Century 3776 every year. Okay, so you found, you've met my Mont Blancs, most of them, most of my sailors, my two Platinums. I have another Platinum, it's a vintage one. Now you're gonna meet my only Cross. This is the Cross Solo Classic in Forest Green Screw Cap. This is quite old as well. I think 1990s, maybe. Very simple nib, beautiful writer, although it's a little dry. This is a gift, and this is a gift from my father. Oh, why are there scratches on it? Okay, so it's just something I can wipe off. So this is a gift from my father about, so I started this December 
then I went back to the Philippines where my parents live and um, he found out I was into fountain pens so he went and he looked for this fountain pen in his collection okay give me a second I'm starting to get a little hmm, bothered by this so I'm just gonna wipe it um, and so he heard that I was into fountain pens so he went and he looked for this which was a gift he also received and he decided it would be his Christmas gift for me and I was so happy and I'm still very happy to have it in my collection very pretty and then we have here a Christmas gift from my husband and son and this is a Tacre. Tacre rarely releases fountain pens they're really into knives and all of that but they had this this is like very interesting okay what is this oh yeah it's a screw cap okay this is not a great writer i'm sorry Tacre. it's not a great writer but it's very pretty and it has a glass breaker on the end finial which is something that we might need um in an emergency so that's the top row one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so oh and sixteen oh no that's the one so fifteen fountain pens right now we're gonna move on to the next jar all right so we are now going to move forward to our second jar so 15 right now let's go and open up the next set <gasps> okay so this particular oops this should be somewhere else this particular uh set of pens are like mm, i would say two mini collections inside my big collection and one sort of one off okay so these one two three four five six are some of the pens that i have that have interesting nibs um i've put together a few videos about these i'll put up another link up there for you i'll also put links at the bottom but let's just go through them so this is a conklin pen and it has an omniflex nib which is kind of like a flex nib, but it's a bit tricky to use. Like you need to really put in a lot of like practice and effort um, into it. So apart from the fact that it has an interesting nib, it's also a very gorgeous pen. Look at that. I love this. It just makes the, well, the pattern just makes the pen look so vibrant. So that's what that is. This is the Furore from the Leonardo Officina Italiana, I think. Okay, and this is the Furore Ginger in CSI Flex. Pretty, pretty nib. Wonderful writing experience. A lot of line variation in this little beauty. Then we have, I think my only food pen or food nib do I twist this? Okay, I, I rarely use this. I need some practice with it. But, ah, oh no, it's a slip cap. E so pretty. It's in blue. Okay, and it has that bent nib, which makes it a food nib. I rarely practice with this. I should practice with it more. Then I have a camera. And this one is really good flex nib. I think this is the Ultra Flex. Okay. And this is the Kenwright Desire in red marble. Very pretty. Really good writing experience with this as well. Then I have my two Esther Brooks in different nibs. I love these Esther Brooks. This is in the journaler nib. So the nib itself is already really, really nice. You see, okay, Esther Brook medium, but this is the journaler. In Novu Blue, it took me so long to get this. Like really, a long time to get this particular Esther Brook. And so I'm very, very happy to have it in my 
collection and around the same time I got that I also got the Esserbrook Model J Antique Rose and this also has a special nib they call it a custom nib um, and this is in Scribe okay so these six are part of my special nib club I do have a few interesting nibs a lot of them are flex these are a little bit of a deviation from the flex I have a few more like special nibs in my collection but this is what this mini collection is about this is the one off in this collection I have two Lamis and only two this is the Maron I think and this is in fine I really like this um, I usually pair it with like a coffee colored ink it's a very good like workhorse and I got this really for its color. Mm, I'm not really fond of Lamy's. I don't know. Is that an unpopular opinion? I'm not really fond of Lamy's because of its length. But this one, I really, really like. I mean, I like this so much that the only way I could get it is if I got it with a notebook set. And I did. Because I really wanted the pen. Okay. Um. Oh, this is another sort of one-off. I got this because of the skulls. This is a Bennu. And this is Bennu Minima. Classic with a skull. And it is, I think, hmm, it's a Schmidt nib. I'm not sure if it's in fine. Oh, medium. It's in medium. Don't know if you can see it. But I like this because of the skull thing. And I really wanted to have a Bennu to experience the Bennu design. And I like having that in my collection. Then you have part of my mini collection. I have another part of it in one of the cases. But this is like the vintage collection. This is one of my oldest pens. Um, released in 1926. This is the Parker Lucky Curve in Magenta. And it's a very special pen for me because 1926 is the year when my grandmother was born. And I really adore my grandmother. And here it is. It's currently housing the um, Pilot uh, Yamabudo. Very nice pen. This is usually housed here in my poetry um, journal. And so if it's not this, it's my uh, Mont Blanc uh, Platinum. That's in this uh, journal okay and then oops here then i have my pilot elabo and very interesting this one actually has a number on it and so it's like one of the first releases very interesting shaped nib it's a flex nib but it's such a tiny like line very very thin line that the flex is just so slightly seen but it's nice. I like it. And this is a Vacumatic that I have. And I forgot. Burgundy Pearl. That's what this is. Quite an old pen as well. Um, this came with a bent nib. And I have, with the help of Panacea. Hi, Pacamil. Um, he initiated the restoration of this nib. And he guided me through further help here at home and so I learned a tiny tiny bit more about nib tuning because of this through Pa Camille of Panacea. If you're into vintage pens, vintage fountain pens, go to Pa Camille. Really great restorer of vintage pens. I'll leave a link uh, below if I can and oh yeah I can leave a link to his uh, YouTube channel below so you can maybe find him there. Okay, so we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 pence. Then we go off to our third jar. All right, so third jar it is. Ta-da! <laughs> and in this one, we have two mini collections here. And one sort of like things that I just liked okay so these four are part of my philippine collection there's a fifth one but it's in a case 
and I'll get to that in a bit. But here we are with a few pens that are either um, made for the Philippines, like an exclusive, or made in the Philippines. Okay, so this is a Kasama. I know I've made a video of this. This is the Kasama Tala Takipsilim, which is a Manila Pen Show exclusive. Oops. It has a Jovo nib. And I think it's in, um, I don't know, medium. Yeah, it's in medium. Really nice writer. I really like it. I remember the first time I was introduced to Kasama, the pens. I thought I wanted this one because the other one felt so big. Uh, I still like this, but in terms of girth, I think I like the other Kasama just a little bit more for the writing experience. That's the Kasama Una. Um, sharing this little bit of factoid with you, when I say I like it because of its size, its girth, or maybe I like it because um, of the way it feels in the hand, just know that the experience is going to be different for every person. Okay, so this is a favorite. Kasama Tala is a favorite size for a lot of people. I still like this, but because I have the Kasama Una as well, the Kasama Una just feels a bit more ergonomic for me and my own writing style. But I love having this in my collection because look at the colors! And I like the fact that I have the two sizes that Kasama comes in. Then I have two from F Inks. This was one of their first iterations. It has a flex nib. No. Okay, I'm wrong. It's not called a flex nib. Looks like a flex nib though. Oh my goodness, I forgot what they call this. Okay, it's in my flex nib showdown video. I'll put a link up there for you. Hmm. It's more like a bouncy nib than a flex nib. I have to agree, but with a little bit of force. <laughs> Don't force your flex pens, but with a little bit, tiny bit more, oh, pressure. That's a better word for it. Tiny bit of pressure. This will work as a very nice flex, semi-flex pen. Really good. And you know what? Um, he even asked me like what design I wanted. And so this is very much a customized piece. Although the um, Okay, so that's the motif, right? And the design is one of his first iterations. This one is another F Inks pen. So when I got this, um, F Inks and I started to go into a discussion about pocket pens because I love pocket pens. And so he, I don't know, maybe it played in his head. And so he made a few pocket pens. And so this is his second iteration. This is the F Inks 22 um, Titanium Grade 5. Beautiful. It's like very much a normal size pen once you have removed the cover and screwed it in. Hmm. Wonderful. And again, this color I actually requested for. It's a bit similar to this. If you haven't noticed a little trend, I do like purple pens. So this is nice. That's F Inks. And then this one is actually a the good the good blue co pen. But it is a Manila Pen Show exclusive through K Lush. So it has Manila 2023 right there. This one is a titanium flex nib. And if you see right there, this one has an interesting nib. It says Okay, I don't know if you can see it. It says, for the love of flex. Ta-da! Okay, this is a nice writer. The only gripe I have with this is I really wish I could, like, slip it in, which I think the design was meant for us to do. So it's like the streamlined pen. But because of the finish of this particular pen, Charatoke, I think is what you call it, it's a bit thick, so you can't really do that. So you just have to put it on the side. Oh, by the way, this is my only pen with some sort of like a white feed. <laughs> you can see I use purple ink on this often. Um, it's very hard to clean, but it really makes 
the um, the nib gush out a lot of ink, which you need for uh, writing with flex nibs. All right, so that's my Philippine collection with one more that is in one of the cases. And then another mini collection here are my bespoke pens. So that would be these three. Again, note that these are my unboxed ones. <gasps> that's saying maybe I have one or two more in the boxes. So this is from Drevnem Pisani. Camila and her husband made these. And the lovely thing about uh, getting from Drevnem is that Drevnem Pisani is that they go through the whole process with you. Like they show you everything. Which blank do you want? Roughly what shape do you want? What section do you want? What nib you want? So it's really very, very customized. So this is, these are from their Magic Garden series. Okay, and these has, I think, Jovo nib. Oh, Bach nib, sorry. This one is in rose gold because it matched. Oh, no, this one should be here. <gasps> now I remember I changed the nib on this one. So this nib is supposed to go with this because pink and pink. But this one is in this one for now because I like it here too. And my favorite part of this is this little rose right there. Nice. These were shipped from Poland. To Jakarta so very special pieces this is again from their magic garden series I changed the nib into a can write nib because I wanted to check if it writes nice it does so there and then another bespoke this time from um, pens by Casey this is my Bali Beach mornings this one we had a lot of discussions about this and he really walked me through the process for this one even being so nice enough to send me new nibs when the first nib that it came with didn't quite work so well okay huh so Philippine bespoke or customized ones and then a few interesting ones this is a diplomat pen this is inked with uh, some red ink right now because my son uses this um, I really like it. It's in my collection. It's on loan uh, to him because I like it. It makes me, like, I don't know, pinstripe pens really get to me. It's very nice, don't you think? Uh, this was designed after the the huge, what do you call those, um, zeppelins. Yeah, and so you can see it. And it has this very antique feel to it. Then I have another Twisby because I like the color. This is the Twisby Diamond Mini or Twisby Diamond 530 in grape. And I think it has a 1.1 stub nib on it for my shimmers and sheens. Ooh, look at the color. This is nice. And then I have one of two pelicans. Oh no, no, one of three pelicans that I own. Um, this is the Pelican Silver White. Mm, I think this is a NM400. And it is an EF, but it's quite a nice EF, I have to say. And one interesting thing about this is how the lines aren't exactly straight. They're a tiny bit just diagonal. And so that's a little quirk of this pen. And finally, in my sort of mix and match set of it. I have a Jin Hao. This is a Jin Hao Cookies and Cream. Okay, I rarely use this. Not even sure if I've used this. I got this because of all the Jin Hao trendiness there is and I really like the colorway of this. Cookies and Cream made me think of Oreos and so I got this but that has yet to be used. Okay, so again we have 15, I think that was 26, right? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And then this one, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. 37 pens with a box. Then we have just a little more to go. Okay, so now we're gonna go move on to cases. So we now have 
37. I already showed you that I usually have one on here and those are in the case right now. Okay, now I have this. This is a new addition to my cases collection. Yes, when you start collecting fountain pens, you'll find yourself collecting fountain pen cases and storage systems as well. This is from Galen Leather and this is their 14 pen Caveco holder. Now I used to have my Cavecos here, but I moved them here because they just started growing and I needed space. Okay, it doesn't want to open. Open please. Okay, I don't know why. Oh, I kind of know why. All right, so here you have part of my vintage collection. So you see here, I have three vintage pens. I have more. Ta-da! I have two more. This is the Platinum Pocket Pen. And um, a lot of people don't know that Platinum um, also has pocket pens, especially vintage ones. This is the Lucky Clover because of the clover. Oh, it has such a tiny little like inlaid nib to it. That's a 14 karat gold nib. So small. Okay, and you post it so that it becomes like a regular sized pen. I don't really do that for this because of the finishing. It has some sort of like porcelain finishing to it. So it's prone to cracks, if you see. So actually, I try not to stress this pen too much, although I still use it. All right. Then, of course, I have the Pilot. This is the Pilot Mew Black Stripes. And this pen is actually a sought-after pen. I was very, very lucky to find it available and to get it as well. It has an integrated nib. Actually, it's like the nib is part of the pen already. Some people like this because of that uniqueness and some people f feel that it's like a little risky. I like it because I like interesting nibs. So this is also part of my interesting nib collection. Then you'll see my Cavecos. This is one of my favorite Cavecos. I've recently fallen in love with uh, the Caveco Lilliputs. This is Caveco Lilliput in fire blue. Ta! And it comes with a medium nib. I wish the nib was like the same color as this, like some gold thing. But then again, again, personal choices, right? But I think that for me at least, I have better writing experiences with the stainless, non gold plated nibs of Caveco. So, yeah, it would have been nice color design thing, but in terms of writing experience, I'm glad that it has the silver uh, nib. So this is the Caveco Lilliput, and then I have a few Caveco Sports. This one, I'm not going to go through all of them and open them up for you, but suffice to say, I have them in extra fine, I have them in fine, in medium, and in broad. I just most probably will tell you their names. This one is in sage. Okay, oops. This one is in olive. Ooh, this one is um, interesting because even if it's a sport, which is like this plasticky thing, it has a gold plated uh, nib to go with it. By the way, the Cavecos are like everyday carries if you baby your pen um this plastic that it's housed in is actually prone to scratches so just be aware of that when you get caveco so you can store them properly or if you're like me you don't really baby your cavecos just know that they will scratch quite easily then i have a few more plastic ones i have the mellow blue i have the macchiato and i have the iridescent pearl it's so pretty i like this it's like translucent but just be aware that when uh ink sort of like le leaks from the nib you'll see it from here as well still a pretty pen then of course i have it in 
bronze, very heavy one. Okay, nice nib again. I use this quite often. It's on ink right now. And I have a few of the aluminum ones. And so I have the iguana blue, the vibrant violet, and the ruby red. The vibrant violet and the iguana, I'll just stick it out for you for a sec, comes in like some sort of matte finish, but the ruby red has this sort of shiny, satiny sort of finish. It's like more velvet. This is more of like satin. Okay, maybe I should put it here. I don't know. Okay, I'll just put these here. All right, so we currently had 37 in our account. So let's go ahead and add what's on this case. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Oh. Okay, so apparently we're going to go over 50. 49 pens so far. All right, let's put that aside. And then to just hit 50, I'll show you what's in my single pen sleeve. Again, from Galen Leather. This is called the Undyed Leather. I shared my collection of Undyed Leather cases. If I can, I'll put a link up there. So to get to 50, I'll share with you my first gold nib pen. A lot of what I've shared with you are have gold nibs, but this is my first ever gold nib pen, and it's a Sailor. This is Sailor Every Rose Has Its Thorn. It's a North America exclusive, and I like it for its body, like its colorway. It has rose gold trim, but this one has like that little glittery thing going for it and I have to say it kind of changes color depending on the light and time of day. This one has a medium nib, 21 karat I think, medium nib on it. Okay, and it is one of my best writers. It's always inked. I use it for my journal all of the time. Okay, so then we've reached 50. <sighs> and then we just have a few more. Two more cases actually. Let's go with this one. Again, Galen Leather Undyed. This is the four pen slip and zip. Done, and it has four pens. Okay, so a lot of these are actually under unusual nibs. Um, Philippine nibs and Pelican. Um, I showed you one of my Pelicans earlier, is it here? Yeah this pelican and I said it's one of three and these are the other two this is the pelican m600 in purple and white or violet and white very nice uh, writer it currently has the pelican rose quartz ink of the year and I have my pelican 140 one of the best flex writers it's actually a semi flex it's also a vintage pen so it's like a lot of things Pocket pen, check. Vintage pen, check. Flex pen, check. So it is one of my favorite pens. Look at that, really cute. And it's in green stripe, which gives it a lot of character. And these pens, actually, these two are almost always inked uh, with this. So these three are almost always inked, if not always inked. And this one is my second Kasama in the set, but it's actually the first Kasama I bought. Where's my other Kasama? Okay, so this is the Kasama Tala, and this is the Kasama Una. This, I think, is their first one, and this is their second one. This is in Ultem, which is a material that is supposed to be super strong, but it's currently housing one of my favorite nibs. It's a flex nib from A to Z. So, you know, eventually when you get into it, so after a year of just playing, I realized that I can now actually sort of understand more of it that I exchange nibs and I sort of favoring uh, more unusual nibs. This is the Lamy Safari Dark Lilac. This is the second Safari I have. So I have two. 
both of which I like for their color. Um, but this one is like an old color, 2019 is it? But this also has an interesting nib. It has the kanji nib of Lamy. It's a black nice kanji nib. Huh. It writes really interesting. It has a slight line variation depending on the direction. Oh my goodness, I've forgotten how many we have so far. So, oh, 50, that's right. This is 50, and then this is 54. Okay, put that away. And now, last two. So apparently, I have 56 fountain pens that are in the collection. I will share, maybe I should share right now, just a few pens that are on their way out. They have their own special case. And these are the pens that I um, had in my collection, but I'm now trying to look for a new home for them. And these would be my two more sailors. One is the Pocket and two Pro Gear Slims because I found out that they're a bit too small for me. Um, and then the Pilot Decimo and the Twispy Vac Mini. So these five are on their way out. This one is already spoken for. I'm still looking for new homes for these other four. Okay, so I'm not really counting it, but just note that I have five here. Okay, so 54 and two more, 55 and 56. So actually if you count those, I have 61, but I'm not counting those, so I have 56. And my two here are my two Mont Blanc Bohems. I talk a lot about these Bohems because they're very interesting pens. They're safety pens. So this is the Bohem in Lacquer Pearl. Very hefty pen too. And to get to the nib, you have to like turn this and finial. Lacquer Pearl, because of the body, it's finished with lacquer and um, it has a Nakaya pearl. And this one is the gold plated rouge, also a bohem from Mont Blanc. And so if you open it, it's rouge because of this, gold plated because it's gold plated. And it's also a safety pen. Ta da! Okay, this is an EF Mont Blanc extra fine, and this one is Mont Blanc medium. I think these are my only inked Mont Blancs right now. So actually I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Mont Blancs. Okay, so there we have it. I actually got a little worried. I thought I had more fountain pens than this. I do have a few unboxed ones that, um, I'm sorry, a few boxed ones that I will slowly unbox and share with you. Um, I haven't unboxed them yet because I haven't really felt the need to explore more and I thought I just didn't have enough space as well and I really want to enjoy them once I unbox them. Okay so 56 pens one year into YouTube. Thank you very much for supporting me as I go through this journey. If you haven't subscribed to me yet please do. I'm actually thinking of having a giveaway at 3,000 or sometime new year because it's a lot of fun sharing the experience with people okay so what have i learned um after one year of the fountain pen adventure a few things that i have learned is that for a lot of us if not almost everyone we actually start off with twist bees because they are just wonderful pieces to own and if not twispies cavecos and you might end up with a lot of them now i'm kind of glad i didn't fall into the twisby um rabbit hole because um i've actually tried writing with the echoes and they don't fit my writing style so again maybe the real learning is you might want to try a few fountain pens if you can join pen meets and all that 
before actually purchasing pens, then that might be good for you because you might just like them for their looks and then eventually realize they don't really fit your um, writing style. Okay, so that's one thing I learned. We start with Twisbees and Cavecos, and we often end up with a lot of them. And it's very hard to part with pens that you had from the beginning because of course you chose them with a lot of intention. Not that I want to part with this because who oh, can part with this color? This is one of my luckiest finds. I mean, luckiest decisions? Mm, don't know. Um, another thing that I learned is that gold nibs may sometimes feel like they write better, but I think that really holds true for more of the vintage gold ones. Um, writing experience wise, they do feel a little softer, tiny bit softer, tiny bit bouncier than your steel nibs. Um, but it, not really by that much. Um, but that you'll also jump into getting gold nibs quite soon after you get into this fountain pen journey. Do the Mont Blancs write better than, say, some of my more inexpensive pens? I can't really say yes. Uh, I have to say that the writing experience is richer because of how pretty they look, and they write pretty nice. Although I have to say I've had problems with my Mont Blancs as well. Um, what else can I say? Sailors are pretty. That's another thing. So after the Twisbees and the Cavecos, uh, people start falling in love with pens like the Sailors and they start collecting a lot and I get it. I have quite a number of Sailors as well. But then again, like I said, try it so you know whether you really want it or not. Because right now, I do have a few Sailors on their way out. Not because they're not pretty. I mean, it's such a very hard decision for me to let them go. Because they're very pretty and I really want them. But then I thought... You know, maybe someone else, someone else's writing style can fit them better. So yeah, one, try pens out if you can. Two, um, until you find out which ones you really like, try not to jump into the rabbit hole of collecting all the colors because they become quite tricky to let go of after some time. Um, and then of course, I wanted to add that some pens are in your collection for sentimental value, and that's nice. Though so you must remember they will take up space. Um, oh yeah, and that eventually, apart from the very pretty designs of the body, the, the colorways and all of that, you eventually will find yourself looking at nibs and the experiences that different nibs give you. Um, what other thing did I learn that I really like uh, vintage pens because of the stories I imagine they hold? Um, and I, you know, there are pens that I like simply because um, they have some sort of sentimental ties to me and where I'm from or birthdays, birth years, and favorite colors. Haha, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And um, so I think after a year of going on YouTube, getting a lot of support and also collecting all these pens, it has made life richer for me because I've started writing a lot this year and I've met a lot of new people that have added um, value to my life, um, whether they're on YouTube or through YouTube and into real life, also through Instagram. Um, and so I'm very, very thankful for this. It has helped me a lot with my uh, mental health because it has broadened my social circle. So I didn't have to like obsess so much with the very small circle that we have, that we eventually find ourselves having when we work outside our country or outside the usual social circles we have. Um, yeah, and so this has been a wonderful journey and I am looking forward to year two with you. Okay, so if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. Please do like this video. This is Kai from Kikai Craft celebrating my first year on YouTube. Wherever you are, I hope you have a great day or a restful evening. 
Bye everyone.